Welcome back to another episode of No Recipes, where we elevate everyday meals using tried and true techniques. I'm Mark Matsumoto, and today I'm going to be showing you how I make my tonkatsu. It's a thick, juicy pork cutlet coated in this beautiful, shatteringly crisp layer of panko breadcrumbs. Although its ancestor is probably the European schnitzel, these large breadcrumbs called panko, as well as a sweet and savory sauce that it's served with, makes tonkatsu uniquely Japanese. Sound good? Let's do this! Our ingredients today include one and a quarter inch thick pork rib chops, salt, white pepper, flour, an egg, and panko. We also have some cabbage for the salad. Panko is Japanese breadcrumbs, which is made from the white part of sandwich bread. The crumbs are way larger than Western breadcrumbs, which gives the tonkatsu an ultra crisp crust. And of course, we have some tonkatsu sauce. It's a spiced fruit sauce that goes perfectly with these rich cutlets. If you can't find tonkatsu sauce, you can make it by mixing together two parts Worcestershire sauce, one part ketchup, and one part honey. So before we get started, I wanted to clear something up because I see a lot of people making this mistake. And that's the difference between tonkatsu and tonkotsu. Ton means pork in Japanese and katsu is short for katsuretsu, which is how Japanese people pronounce cutlet. So tonkatsu means pork cutlet. If you're a fan of ramen, you've probably also heard of tonkotsu ramen. Kotsu means bone in Japanese, so tonkotsu ramen literally means pork bone ramen. Please don't get the two mixed up. If you walk into a ramen shop and ask for a pork cutlet ramen, you're likely to get a lot of confused looks. Kotsu, bone, katsu, cutlet. Kotsu, katsu, kotsu, katsu. All right, I think you got it. Let's start by preparing the shredded cabbage. You want to use the crisp, tender inner leaves of the cabbage. So use the outer leaves for something else. You also want to remove the tough stem from the center of each leaf. Now you just have to stack them up and roll them together. Rolling them like this makes it much easier to slice the cabbage into thin strips. Use a sharp knife to shred the cabbage as thinly as possible. When you've finished shredding, drop the cabbage in a bowl of ice cold water. This not only helps the cabbage crisp up, it also tames that cabbagey funk. To prepare the pork, I'm gonna generously salt and pepper both sides. In case you're wondering why my chops have huge slits cut into them, it's because I forgot to tell my butcher not to score them. When choosing your chops, be sure to look for ones that have relatively even marbling without huge chunks of fat. You also want to select the best type of pork that you can afford. I'm using Berkshire pork today. Okay, now we're gonna dust these evenly with flour. The flour together with the egg that we're about to dip these in creates a kind of a glue that helps the panko bond to the surface of the pork. Next, we just need to dip each cutlet into some beaten eggs. Be sure to coat every nook and cranny, otherwise you're gonna end up with bald spots. Finally, we're gonna give our tonkatsu a nice shaggy coating of panko. Be sure to roll it around to get an even coating of breadcrumbs on every surface. You can also give it a gentle pat to help the panko adhere to the surface of the meat. Your pork cutlets should end up looking something like this. Time to fry them! I've got a heavy bottomed pot here with 2 inches of oil preheated to 320 Fahrenheit or 160 Celsius. Gently lower the cutlet into the oil, being careful not to scrape the breading off the meat. Now we just want to let this fry until the pork registers 140 Fahrenheit or 60 Celsius. Carryover cooking will continue to raise the temperature up to 145 Fahrenheit as it rests, so be careful not to overcook it. After a few minutes, flip the tonkatsu over. You'll want to do this a couple times as it fries to ensure it browns evenly. Just be careful not to scrape off the breading or to splash yourself with the hot oil. You'll also want to periodically skim off any brown gunk that accumulates on the surface of the oil to keep it from discoloring your cutlet. When you're checking the temperature, 
Be sure to lift the tonkatsu out of the oil so you get an accurate reading. My tonkatsu took about 14 minutes to cook through, but the frying time will depend largely on the size and fat content of your cut of meat. You can't see it, but my thermometer is reading 141 Fahrenheit, so this is perfect. Now you want to let this rest for about 5 minutes to let it finish cooking through. Okay, we're ready to slice the tonkatsu. Just listen to that explosion of crisp crust. Want to hear that again? I ate this whole thing for lunch, but I'm getting hungry again just thinking about it. Plate this up with the shredded cabbage and add some tomatoes for a splash of color and you have an awesome meal that's both satisfying and delicious. The rich pork cutlet is tender and juicy and the panko crust is ridiculously crisp. In Japan, we eat tonkatsu with all kinds of toppings including grated daikon with ponzu and sweet miso. But for me, Nothing beats the balance of sweet, savory, and tangy in tonkatsu sauce. Would you have a look at that and tell me it's not making you drool? So what did you guys think? Are you on your way out the door to pick up some pork? Do you want to see me make some more Japanese food? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, be sure to give us a big thumbs up and smash that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss my next delicious episode. All right, I'm off to go get a big bowl of rice and have me some tonkatsu for lunch, but I'll see you next Sunday. Be sure to catch us on Instagram at no recipes.